Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is your Apostle Nicole Reddick with Converting Souls International Ministries, 83207-3066. And I am with you today. Prophetess King will be bringing a message today for you. Without further ado, this is Apostle Reddick turning it over to Prophetess King. Good afternoon. I hope everyone is doing well. Let us pray. Father God in Jesus, I come before you this day to speak on your word. And Holy Spirit, I invite you into the conversation. As I read, the Holy Scriptures. I pray, Lord, that Thou would bless me with knowledge, with wisdom, with understanding, comprehension of what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking through Your Word. Anoint every eye and every ear. Break up the fallow ground of their heart, so when the Word of God is sown. It'll fall on a well-cultivated ground. And I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to speak your word in the name. Amen. The title would be, the title is Offering Hope for the Future. And we'll be coming from Isaiah chapter 29. Verses 13 to 24. But I, I probably won't read all those verses. Just a few of them. Unfaithful worship. I, that's in 29. Isaiah 29 verses 13 and 14. The Lord says. These people come near to me. With their mouth. And honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based merely based on merely human rules they have been taught. Therefore, once more, I will. Astound though these people with wonder upon wonder, the wisdom of the wise will perish, the intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. The failure to heed the contents of the scroll in Isaiah chapter 29. Verse 11, 12 results in the characterization we see here insincere piety. The people's worship was little more than going through the motion with their mouth and their lips. The people Best. loyalty and devotion to God but their hearts weren't in it their hearts were far from God I wonder why they were not worshiping with their whole heart Their hearts were far from it. Isaiah had confessed his own and his people's unclean lips when he was called by God. That's in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. Centuries later, 
Jesus will apply these very words to the teachers of the law and Pharisees in his day. That's found in Matthew chapter 15, verse 1 to 9, and Mark chapter 7, verse 5 to 8. What was um, Isaiah here? Isaiah 6, verse 6, chapter 6, verse 5. Centuries later, Jesus would apply these same, these, the very words to the teachers of the law and Pharisees, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. In his day, that's uh, Matthew 15, Chapter 15, verse 1 to 9, and Mark, chapter 7, verse 5 to 8. We'll go to Mark. Isaiah is a longer reading than Mark. By the eight. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not your disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said to them, Well, has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites? As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. However, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as the worship, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things you do. The law response to response is to shatter. Apathy of astonishing these people with wonder upon wonder. Literally, the promise is, I will treat this people wonderfully, wonderfully, and with wonder. This is something wonderful beyond the description. But what is this wonderful, wonderfully wonderful, wonder? The second half of the verse before us is cited by Paul in 1 Corinthians 1, 19. Let us go to 1 Corinthians 1, 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. prudent. Let's go to Isaiah 29, 14. Go back to Isaiah. Four twenty nine verse fourteen. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do 
a marvelous work among the people. E even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of this of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hidden okay as justification for his statement the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us are being saved it is is the power of god that's first corinthians verse 118 paul goes on to commit on how God has made foolish the wisdom of the world and brought it down to nothing by means of the cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19 to 25. The cross of Christ shall move us to humble worship. May we never lose our sense of wonder at that which is so called intelligence with T U A L at the end, giving it a problem. People of the world ridicule yeah people of the world do ridicule make fun of us christians especially when we tr we're witnessing them. and they want to want to stay locked into what they know and don't want to look beyond what they know unfaithful plan isaiah 29 verse 15 to 22 woe to them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the lord and their works are in the dark and isaiah, isaiah 29 verses 15 to 22 they say, who sees us and who knows us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's faith. For shall the work say to him, of him that made it? He made me not, or shall the thing framed say to him that framed it? He had no understanding. Is it not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fertile, fer fertile, a fruitful field? And the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of the obscurity and out of darkness. For the terrible one is brought to nothing, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch 
and all that watch for iniquity are cut off, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproves in the gate. And turn aside the just for a thing of nothing. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. Those who fancy themselves to be wise and intelligent are frequently those who go to great depths to hide their plan from the Lord. They literally, literally stop at nothing to do whatever is necessary to conceal their sinful plans from God. I pause it for a moment. There's nothing done that God doesn't see. God sees everything. His eyes run throughout the earth. So he sees everything. He knows everything. He know your thought before it's conceived in your mind. He know what you're going to do before you do it. That's how great the God I serve. Praise the Lord. I'll go back to but I'll, If only they would exert similar effects similar effects wait a minute similar efforts to discover the truth that god has gone to great depths to reveal to humanity the way we're seen to believe that god is subject to the same limitation that restrict human. Supposedly, he cannot know or see what is plain or done in darkness. But as David rightly observes, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. The darkness is as light to you. That's Psalm 119, 139, verse 12. Psalms what? One, Psalm 139, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Want to turn to the song? Listen. Yeah, I'll turn you just to read it. it. Not song 139. Yeah, you said the night shines like the day to no, That ain't song 139. That song. song 139 talks about um, fearfully made. I am wonderful. Okay, let's go and see. You're talking about verse 11. It says, If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and oh. the night shall be light upon The darkness hideth not from me, but the night shineth as the day, and the darkness. So that's in my.
and the back. Okay. Verses 7 12. Yea, the darkness hide not from. This is verse 12. Yea, the darkness hides not from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. That's amazing. How God sees. Yeah, because you rise upon the cloud, the darkness. Surround about it, rise upon the cloud. So, yeah, the darkness is like the daytime to God, and the daytime shines brightly by the sun, is shining brightly. That's why nothing is covered, nothing is hid from God. Whatever your plan is, the light is shining on that dark thought. Our action. God sees it. God knows it. Your time. Oh, I'm finished. Yes. They do the faithful. I'm gonna read some the the faithful worship. That's uh. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 23-24. When they see among them their children, the work of my hand, they will keep my name holy. They will acknowledge the holiness of the Holy One of Jacob and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. Those who are wayward in spirit will gain understanding. Those who complain will accept instruction. If at the, the time of restoration, Jacob were to observe Israel, the nation hearing his name, has changed by God. That's found in Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. He will see renewed devotion to God in spite of Israel, the Israelites' unfaithfulness. They will remain as God's creative work. God has remained committed to them until he finished what he started in them. Human unfaithfulness does, does not deter God. To keep God's name holy is to acknowledge God's inheritance. Inheritance holiness. We cannot add to God's holiness, but we can add to the number of those who know his holiness and also worship him. Israel will come to worship and obey God with a sense of awe and reverence. That's Isaiah chapter 29, verse 17. Is it not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a... Oh, I read it. I read it, but I'll finish it off. Turn into a fruitful field, 
and the proof of fear, fear shall be esteemed as a far. It was gonna be that it will be so fertile that trees are gonna grow. And that, this concludes the message of the day. Um, offering hope for the future. So as the Israel, Israelites became, their hearts were changed where they could worship and praise God with, in the spirit and in truth. So, mm -hmm. Our hearts can be changed too. And we heed to what Isaiah is saying in chapter 29. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that something I said, that someone caught it, and they began to uh, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth with a with pure heart. So I just thank you, Lord God. If it starts with me, it's quite all right. A praise and a worship is an awesome delight. And I thank you for the praise and worship that will fall, come from my mouth as I praise and worship you. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. Amen. Would you like to tell a testimony? Oh, the one I said about in church? No. Huh? Any testimony? A testimony. Okay. When you think that you're by yourself. Your testimony. Uh-huh. My testimony is when I came to New Jersey, back to New Jersey, Kansas, I was by myself, and I thought I was alone and forgot, even though I had family here. But I was, didn't have a longing for my family. The longing was for God, to get closer to God, to get closer to Jesus, to go into a, a praise and a worship, because I was in a bad place and stay in mind. And the word that came to my mind was in the basement of the, in the valley of despair. And I was in a despair state. And it took me a while to come out of there. And the only way I came out of there, I got the Bible and I started reading. And finding words of encouragement in the Bible. Seeing how, how the Israelite overcame their basement of despair. Because a lot of them got killed. So. So I just. I just thank you Lord that I was able to come up out of that valley. Valley of despair. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. That was Prophetess King. That was a good testimony. And this is your Apostle Reddick, and we are closing for this session. Peace and blessings to you all.